he's involved in it. Yeah, that said, oh man, it could be Jaws alive. Oh, it's it's jackknifed. I can't get over, otherwise I would. I got a Pete next to me. And good morning, back at Niagara. Everybody's kind of sleeping, so I don't want to throw the lights in there. Sabers. Five three one four four six. Who's Justin. This is Justin. Go ahead to door fourteen one four. All right. Thank you. No problem. Fourteen. All right. Last time we were thirty two, moved to thirty three. So fifty nine degrees out here. Let's do it. And we're in there. So our buddy just. Pulled out, so he must have been loaded pretty quick. See how long this takes. And this is the fourth time I've tried it. I think the problem is it says 2 a.m. Uh, for delivery. That is not right. It's supposed to be 9.30 a.m., so I don't know. My goodness, I ended up calling uh, three times and then they finally just printed them out from their end, but for some reason it said two o'clock appointment and uh, yeah, that was not a two o'clock appointment, it's 9.30, so we got our bills finally, but it took a while. Let's go close our, oh, we gotta pop our brakes for our trailer so we can go ahead and slot our tandems. But yeah, a little, little malfunction. Nothing ever goes perfect, you know. Let's put our seal on, get going. And we are back. We have one lane right here on the end next to this, uh, maybe old Schneider truck. I oh, know it says Schneider on a truck, so it's just an incognito one. There's an old Volvo right there. Or actually, no, it's an international. That's the first truck I ever drove was a uh, 9900i. Those trucks that are kind of parked straight, I wonder if they just kind of, this is their parking area, I don't know. But we have two and a half hours till our appointment, so we're just gonna chill out here and wait. Probably check in half an hour before this time, because last time we waited a good hour and a half before they gave us a door. Beautiful sunrise, though. Uh, looks like we're gonna be in perfect line to get right next to this guy. 63 degrees. All right. Like a glove. Let's set an alarm and we'll be out there at uh, 9 o'clock. Okay, thank you. And now we wait. But hey, whatever. It's 75 degrees this morning. It is 9.20 a.m. for a 9.30 appointment. So, Let's see if it takes them an hour and a half. Because last time I was about an hour and a half early. So, now we'll just pull up in here uh, 15 minutes before our appointment and see what happens there. Here and uh, wait for the phone call. Pretty much identical, identical spot where we were yesterday. All right, let's, let's do it. Much better. We got door one seven zero. Only took them about twenty minutes to call me. So 
be right on time to these appointments, I guess, these days. Don't even try to be early. We're just expected to sit there for as long as it was till your appointments. 170. All right. Black crow flying across, two of them hanging out. Let's get in there. Okay, so it only counts up to 120 um, over there, so. We're probably on the other side. He didn't tell me that though. I've never been on the other side. But this starts counting up from, I don't know, maybe 10 to 120. So that guy's got bottled water just like us. 170 though, I don't know where that's at. But first come down to the end here and see if there's something down here. And then I guess I'll go to the back side. I confirmed it. I said 170. He said, yep. All right. Huh. Okay. So it looks like it does keep counting up. So we're on this side. There's nobody else over here, though, but Dollar General. Maybe they just don't have the room for the water. I don't know. Maybe they need to put it on this side. We shall see. It starts counting up again. Yep, it goes up. 122, 123, okay. Where is 170? All right, one truck's back here, and 170's right next to the dumpster. At least it is not very busy. Come as close as we can to these trailers, and then swing back out. Should give our uh, trailer a second to line up all this scaffolding that they chose to put right here where you need to put your truck. <laughs> oh my God. We gotta open our door still. And then this place requires you to disconnect just like we did yesterday. There we go, that's a good, good angle. Let's go open those doors. Okay, we just got the call. They said hook up to your trailer and come to door uh, 83 because we're on the back side, I guess. Check out greenapu.com if you need an auxiliary power unit. Let's go get our bills. It is hot out here. Gotta see what it is on the dash. And while we're going over there, let's check out the loads from down here. Nice meeting you today, Percy from Houston, Texas. He's like, hey man, I watched some of your videos. Said, Thanks, man. So I came all the way over here, took me a while to hook up and talk to Percy for a little bit, and then uh, I go in there, they're all eating KFC, they're on break. And she's like, oh, I haven't got your bills yet, just wait out there. Like, right. <laughs> Whatever. So I told her where we're parked. We'll wait. Let's check out these loads. Got our paperwork ready to rock. Truck Smarter right there in the middle. Check it out in the iOS at the Android App Store. Um, it's free, so it's the best thing about it. And it's in the description below. There's an invite code. The latest video will have the latest invite code. They change it every two weeks. Okay, TQL, uh, PA, New Jersey, nah, nah, nah. back down to Florida, Tampa for 400. Come on, no one can do better than that. Then uh, Evans, Georgia, that was up yesterday too. It's a beer load. So if you see Bush Drive, it's Budweiser. And they just uh, decreased the price. Okay, well. Put a bit on that for increase, not decrease. Heavy load, and you gotta kinda go through the back roads to get to Augusta from the bottom of Savannah. All right, bids place the combo, so they know we're interested. Uh, all the way down to Miami from Jacksonville, 1200. Melody's Miami also. That one, heavy going up through Tennessee mountains, up into Kentucky, if it was close to that 26 to three grand, yeah, but I doubt they're gonna come there, but you can always always bid on it. And there's the yeah, all the way down to Miami. That would have to be 
because you're gonna deadhead back 350 miles just to get back to Jacksonville. So think about that fuel, it's $350 or more. Da, da, da. Um, couple, I'm looking for something like Atlanta, North Carolina, Charlotte, South Carolina, that kind of stuff. British Columbia, no thanks. Connecticut, no thanks. Like Buena Vista, TQL. Even though TQL did get us down here. I don't always I look for them for first choice. Um, Collins below us. Lots of loads, that's the thing, but not um, not great buying uh, options as to start with. You can always negotiate. Let's see, Bowling Green, Florida. Nah, 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 nah. Frostproof, kind of down between a Tampa and Lakeland area, but I had to go way up there to get it, so that's already gone. Someone, someone booked it. Maybe somebody wanted to go down there. Sanford, Cooler, doo, doo, doo. Douglas, that's uh, a bit up there, but it does take us up to Atlanta area. No. Those XPOs, those have been up there yesterday also. Uh, down to, looks like Lowe's, kissing these normally Lowe's. So we'll bid on that, see what they say. 1950. Got to go all the way back up to Savannah to get it, but there's plenty of time to get there. That one's placed at least. I just place bids on everything so they know I'm interested, and then they'll, they'll call you if they need you, or they'll email you. Benton, Tennessee for 700 Come on now. <laughs> way up there. Not worth it. You could take 700 short hops instead of going all the way up there, unless you wanted to get home, but that's just going to cover your fuel. are all little short hops. Savannah to Tampa, it's a little weak. You'll be dead heading out of Tampa too. Now there's loads though. Well, those are the loads. Uh, sorry about the glare, you got the sunroof coming in right there. Um, so it looks like we're gonna head to Jacksonville because it was starting to get down towards further going south and the further you go south, the worse the loads are. And like that one, my uh, Miami Love, Melody, Florida. So if you go that far down, you're dead heading 350 miles back up to Jacksonville. So just think about that stuff when you ever come to Florida. So I'm gonna try and get to Jacksonville, see if anything new pops up, like that uh, Budweiser load, the 11 Bush Drive or 111 Bush Drive. That's a Budweiser load going kind of by Augusta. That would work, but 400 bucks, and they're heavy. They're, they scale you out to the max. And uh, that's gonna be at least 800 bucks for me if I take that, but I bid 1050 just to see what they say. But Convoy typically doesn't come back with counters. They just don't accept it unless <laughs> you're like right where they wanna be. So maybe I'll come back at 900 when we get closer to Jacksonville. But right now I'm just gonna head towards Jacksonville. I know that's my best bet for um, maximizing my truck. And then if I don't get anything today, I'll just probably hang out in Brunswick, which is kind of maybe get the truck wash, maybe find someone to polish the tires or the, the wheels. <laughs> um, but hopefully some pops up later for the day because it's noon now. So uh, we'll get up to Jacksonville 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, depending on this traffic because we have to go kind of let it angle through some smaller towns. So we'll see what pops up. We need some lunch though. We've got Dodge Ram jumping in front of us. I like it. I like it. And uh, looks like Anheuser Busch is starting to move some some uh, holiday beer or something because they got. A, I haven't seen Anheuser Busch loads on the board for a while, so to see them uh, a little different. That Volvo must be heavy. He's starting off real slow. Uh, KFC Burger King. It's probably got that food at that uh, Dollar General. Is the KFC probably most likely? But we're gonna go through here. That's 75 right in front of us. South down to Tampa, north up to uh, southern Georgia. What do we got going on here? A little, a little fifth wheel cutting off a Toyota or a Subaru. There you go. Made it in there. Good job. Go Subaru. Go. Yeah, it's a pretty Corvette over there. Bright green. All right, let's get going. Make it to Jacksonville. It was 88 degrees when we left the uh, Dollar General uh, distribution center. I don't know if this guy in front of us has solar panels stuffed in the back of his car. 
looks like we have some weather rolling in. Um, if I, I kind of just map my GPS going home, and if I would have went the Atlanta side, uh, it said severe weather. I said, okay. <laughs> Um, and then right now my side going up the coast doesn't say that so maybe it's just kind of I know there's some tornado watches we're over there in the middle of America but uh, well, I don't know looks like we got some clouds so we'll definitely probably get some rain and hopefully we don't hit a solar panel or I don't, I don't think it's solar panels the solar panels would be way too heavy for that car to have on top of it but got something going down well that came quickly uh, Sideways rain and a lot of clouds, so here we go. Keep adding the swivel and get through it. At least the truck's getting washed by itself, I guess, sort of. That's one positive. But we need the rain. We got a little drought going on, so hopefully South Carolina's getting a lot and uh, so is Georgia. Okay, the map is showing two bad accidents up here going into Jacksonville. So we are going to veer off uh, the 301 that goes like down to Stark and it cuts back up to uh, above Jacksonville. So it's a nice little road a lot of you guys use. Put you in like right below the uh, way station and then heading out of Florida. So we'll take that because it says it saves you 14 minutes. Um, and then we're going to check Truck Smarter real quick, probably regroup. Uh, what's going on here? Can I still go left? Because the, the left thing is like closed. Yeah, we can go left. Okay, so there's like a whole nother one to just go this way now, but they must be working on it because it's closed. And there's a big old crane over there. Lots of rain. But yeah, we'll check out Truck Smarter and uh, see if we got some loads. What we can do, probably do that right now because we just came to a red light. Okay, so we just checked right there and there's these two loads. First get this light because that was a quick light. Those, all that was in front of me, those two trucks, the bobtail and a oversize and the light turned that quickly. Bennett, that's a cool uh, trailer they got right there, honoring our heroes. Nicely, nicely done, Bennett Trucking. But um, yeah, there's those two loads going to Walterboro, which is actually where I blew my hub. That's where I was getting my hub on my trailer redone when it almost caught on fire. I'm gonna stop at Love's up here. Uh, those two loads, um, I'll check on those. I, I bid on them, but it actually said get an email, so I'll try that. And then Convoy. Sent me a notification saying I lost that load to like Augusta area with for the, someone booked it for 400 something dollars. I pray no one booked that for $400. You have to realize out here, guys, uh, brokers have all the power. The brokers tell you, um, I do not think I want to get back on the freeway right here. Hold the phone, hold the phone, blinker on. You have to go to the next lights to get the loves. There we go, no one's coming behind me, anyways. Um, brokers have all the power. Like, the 15 day average for uh, like DAT, load board or truck stop, whatever those ones are. That's all Fugazi, it's all fake. It's, they don't have, the, I guarantee the two $800 loads I just took for 12, 60 miles are not included in that 15 day average of anything. Um, they just take what they want you to see because that's what they can show you. And so it's, it's kind of a smoke and mirror saying they tell you, oh no, we take these all the time for this much money or oh, someone else uh, booked it for this. When in reality, they're just going to push that load to tomorrow. They don't have to move it. They just want to make you feel like, oh, you lost it. So maybe if you hold out till tomorrow, you'll take it for that price. That kind of thing. So think about that. Uh, JB Hunt has one going right back to like Orlando area. Kissing me. Um, I've been on that one. I think I've been 1200 or 1400 I don't know. I have to go up to Savannah. It picks up till 5 to get it. It's about 1 o'clock right now. There you go, Rutgers, I think is what your fan is. Okay, another yellow light. Let's do this. Yellow, yellow. Mellow Yellow, my favorite car of Days of Thunder, besides the Superflow, pink and white. But that cold trickle, you couldn't beat them. Um, yeah, so there. Convoy's telling me I lost the bid, but that load was up yesterday, too. So, and then um, Coyote has one that they just said the price got decreased, as you can see right here. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Okay, well, they just play games, guys. I hate it. I wish it was just up front, like, hey, we need this move. We got this much. We can get out of it. Make 10%, make 5%, move for the customer. If you're making money and you're at a computer, um, that's why I kind of want to get in the brokerage game. I want to, ex not, not expose, but kind of teach people how to play the how to play the business. Um, you don't have to give the brokers all the money just because you're scared about sitting. Because a lot of people, they just want to keep a truck moving. They book their truck out three or four or a whole week or two weeks in advance just to have loads lined up. And then one of those loads cancels and you're like, what? What, family dollar? Are you gonna stay there? All right, I'm going left. I'll put the blinker on for you. Well, I think he's actually taking that spot right there. Um, 
Yeah, so they will book them out, but then one of those loads cancels and then you're done. <laughs> you're not going nowhere. So we're probably going to be sitting today. I'm going to get to Brunswick, so I'm kind of be between Jacksonville and Savannah in case something c comes in either one of those areas. I'm actually going to to uh, split the... Oh, no, he's power washing. All right, I'm going to stay right behind the cone, and when he's done power washing, I'll pull through. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps you guys. Just don't get scared. If you want loads booked out a week in advance, then by all means, that's you. Go for it. Um, but to maximize your truck, maximize your rate per mile, and maximize your home time, you have to be a little, little different. And I'm staying out longer now because I don't know what that was, guy was just saying, but okay. Someone's truck is hot over there. You shouldn't be. Oh, man, I got to talk to this person. You shouldn't be steaming that much off your motor. See right there, in front of that. I think that's international. The truck next to him is not steaming. Unless he's pushing his truck that hard, uh, he's got a leak or something down there going on. Make sure if you see that ever, guys, it's not normal. It's not just cold outside. It's 64 degrees. You shouldn't have that much steam coming off. So, all right, done with the rant. It's raining. Let's get a little grub. I forget what this place has. I think they have some chicken tenders I can get. And then uh, we can go ahead and keep rolling. So I waited to pull up for a little bit because um, I don't want to leave my truck out there, but it'll be all right. I guess that wood doesn't be tarped. <laughs> I emailed the SRAM company and they emailed me pretty closely back. I called them first, but they said email uh, SRAM loads at SRAM logistics.com. So I emailed them and they came back and they said, uh, sorry, that one's covered. There was two of them. And then I said, what about the other one? And they haven't responded yet. So that's a pretty good rate. 1200 bucks just to go up 200 miles. So the loads are still out there, guys. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you just gotta wait and pick them right. That guy's truck stopped steaming, so maybe he's just pushing it hard. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. welcome, welcome. Good thing my kids aren't here. Man, oh man. Oh, we got Bojangles. I can get a chicken sandwich. They actually got a really good chicken sandwich. Forgot. This is a brand new Loves, guys. Oh, but the line. The line, the line might hinder me from doing that because it's a little busy. And I don't want any pizza, even though it looks good. Well, look who it is. It's old Shelby from Happiness by the Mile. I loved hanging out with her at uh, Super Rigs, and we went there with Shell. I grabbed the uh, chicken club wrap because I did not want to wait that long for uh, good old Bojangle stuff. But even more people are in line. Uh, his motor is not not steaming no more. He's good. Oh, the, I can't walk through the pumps. There we go. We're just gonna climb over one. Here we go. Oh. Oh. I thought he'd be done pressure washing that bay, but he's still doing it. It's always so busy. It loves. There she is. Let's get going. This is turning into a bad choice. <laughs> he ran out of gas. So I was just going to move the handle and roll through, but I don't want to disrespect his uh, his cone that's right in front of the truck here. So we'll wait till he's done. Hopefully he's almost done with his bay. But these guys just got to, they came out here and moved the cone and just did their own thing. So try to be respectful because he's trying to do this one. They're trying to do that one. They probably should do this in the middle of the night, but hey, whatever. It's not like it's super busy here. Whatever. Oh, and uh, C8 or uh, JB Hunt, look on the left. I think that broker's trying to call me from the JB Hunt number, which is that 800 number, and then he's trying to call me because that 928 number keeps calling me right after the 800 number. And I just offer back on the app. I don't want to be sold. I don't want to be told that that's all I have in it is $1,300 because it's listed for $900. they are counter offering $1,300. Uh, right now, and I said I'll do it for 1800 So we'll see what they say. When it picks up to five, we could easily go pick it up. Um, we'll see if that fruitions. But it just lets you know my truck is valuable. My truck is. There's a lot more loads coming on the board right now too. They're just like going up to Maryland for $1,700 from from Savannah. That uh, if you lived up there, that might be something good for you. But for me, well, that doesn't work for me. Um, but yeah, the loads are definitely prevalent right now. Okay, so take them while you can get them. Make your truck. Make your truck. Full of its worth, know your worth. 
And okay, we made it to 95, a little bit of rain, but pretty smooth sailing. Um, we're right here, kind of before the loves on 95, before we leave Florida. And there's a couple things we gotta talk about. <laughs> what I'm talking about with the brokers have all the control is, this is a prime example of what this video is about today. Besides blocking fuel island, which I was just waiting for the pressure washer guy to get out of the way, as you saw, a fuel island blocker is a big uh, concern, a big uh, courtesy in the trucking industry. Don't do not do that, uh, it's, a, it's a big, big no-no. But here we go, okay, so this JB Hunt load is coming out of Savannah, going down to uh, Lowe's and uh, kissing me. The drop trailer one where they really just take a trailer and bring it back. And I said I'd do it for 2,000 to begin with, so he came up to 1,300, it was originally 900. And then he was up to 1,500 and uh, he kept calling me, as I told you earlier. I just don't want to hear the sales pitch. I just said, this is what I'll do it for. And then um, it came off the board. He did it at 1500 uh, like a couple times. He counted off me on it. And I know that that's when I know that they need, they want the truck and they need a truck. Um, or it's getting close to the time where they can't keep pushing it back. Either way, uh, he emailed me and said, um, hey, call me about this load. And I just said, um, and I got to that email after, when I was just sort of sitting here right now, after I'd already, um, saw that the load was taken off the board. So you'll see it says, unfortunately, it's not yours. And then I emailed him back on right below that email where it says this load's still available. Um, I emailed him back and said, hey, congrats on getting it covered because he pulled it off the board. And I said, okay. And after I said, congrats on getting it covered, he said, this is still available. And then right away, he puts it back on the board and puts 1500 again. I'm like, I'll do it for, for 18, man. That's what I'll do it for. Um, no rush, I'm gonna head up to Savannah. I'll probably be looking for loads um, till the end of the day, and uh, let me know if you need me to cover it. And then uh, he counter offered fifteen fifty, right there. And I was then I said, okay, seventeen fifty. Um, I'm empty. Uh, it's the lowest I'll go. Uh, if you need me, just just let me know. Just uh, accept it or whatever you need to do. And then two minutes later, pulled off the board again. So they have the power. Is what I'm trying to say. The brokers have the information. They have the knowledge that they, they need to move it now, or they need to, or they can push it back. Because what they're doing, they're doing is this customer. They're just selling to them. Like I can move it for, I can move it for two grand. Sure is, sure is. Or twenty five hundred. Todd, I'm driving. <laughs> somebody, somebody, know, somebody knows each other. Let's turn that down. Um, but yeah, they're selling to a customer, and then when it comes to the time where they haven't covered it for that customer. What I'm trying to get to all the owner operators out there, we, we hold a huge majority of the market out there. The megas hold it, I uh, forget the percentages, but owner operators and single truck fleets or small fleets are the majority of the, the thing out here. If we, I wouldn't say work together, because we're never gonna work together. You can't pull all these different companies together. There's a big stigma and it's weird about truckers. They're all wanna one up each other. Wanna do better or this. And we all just taught each other how to book loads and, and uh, think of the mindset more of the sales mentality of the brokers and they're trying to sell you like oh well you move this one for cheap over here and I'll get you a good one come back like no I want my fuel money plus I want to make money on that load if I have to have I taken loads before that are just to move me for fuel yes if you want to go home I understand that or whatever and it's a horrible market or it's a saturated market but I think the trucks are starting to level out right now I know that the holiday just happened so a lot of stuff backs up so that could be part of it it's probably going to level out again but if we all kind of understand the games understand like that's the uh, this uber load right here it's the first time i've seen uber put up a good load leaving going out to uh north north of um, north carolina and then uh the two other loads i was talking about earlier they're posted for tomorrow this convoy load for the anheuser bush that was i was bidding on earlier the day said i lost and somebody else won it for 400 and something dollars back on the board for 400 and some dollars so they hold the information is what I'm trying to teach you guys. If you're uh, your own dispatcher, if you run your own truck, or you run a small fleet and you're dispatching at home, understand the games. Don't let their mentality beat you where they tell you, oh, uh, you lost the load because they want you to just go take something else. Maybe with a different broker or somebody else or have that mentality like that's what this lane goes for. That's why DAT tells you, oh, the 15 day average is this. So you think that's the high point or that's the starting point when it's up to you. It's up to what your bottom line is, what kind of truck you're driving. How, how you want to spend your time out here, how much fuel costs you, all those different things. So how, how hard do you want to work and what markets you want to work in and what markets you're in. So that's just, if I could teach anything from this video is just to understand it. There's a lot of games being played on these load boards and a lot of games being played with these brokers. Even the brokers that are vetted, like Truck Smarter, every broker on Truck Smarter is going to be payable. They're going to be factorable. Um, 
these other load boards, the pay, pay as you play load boards, which load boards should be free. So if you have those load boards, just ditch them. Eventually, if everybody ditches them, they'll be free, which they should be. They should pay, get paid for advertising. They should get paid for in other ways. Advertising is a huge industry, guys. And I forget the billions of dollars, but they can advertise on their sites, and that's the way to make their money. And they probably still are, plus they're taking money from you. I've never paid for a subscription for a uh, load board. So, and plus they're just lying to you. <laughs> There's lying to you about 15 day average, lying to you about this and that. And then a lot of the brokers that are on those load boards, I'd say 30, 40% minimum are not factorable or maybe they're going out of business soon. Um, they're just trying to push some loads, give you a great rate and then they're never going to pay you. And then you got to take them to court one day or something to try and get your money, which you're probably never going to see. So I'd rather stick with what's tried and true, but even what's tried and true, these big brokers, these JB Hunts, these Coyotes, these CH Robinsons, uh, the smaller ones, there's a bunch of different ones I saw today that I've never seen because Truck Smart's always adding more brokers, but they vet them. They can't just be some guy like me that just came in, if I open my brokerage tomorrow, and start blowing out loads of double brokering. Because double brokering means there's a, a broker, it's like a smaller one, or maybe someone has a direct customer, and I see that load on load board, and then I broker it out for more. And then I, it's taking the load in, getting the, the Raycon, and trying to just, uh, sell it out to somebody else to run it. So, it's illegal it's they haven't been able to completely get rid of it but it still exists so a lot of these smaller brokerages will come out and just do that and just prey on the, the carrier that wants to move a truck load or, or needs to move the truck somewhere else or they fear that they can't sit for a day so sitting for a day is not always bad especially with that much fuel cost right now so i know it's a long rant but i've been trying to teach you since i started this channel if you're running your own truck don't be manipulated by the games don't be manipulated by uh, oh, unfortunately, it's not yours. Oh, you lost this bid, and it was booked for four hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> like, no, well, that was that didn't happen. If someone did do that, they're going to go bankrupt really soon. So, just don't be manipulated. The brokers have all the power. They have all the keystrokes that will take a load off the board and put something in your mind that that load is gone, and then they'll put it back on the board and tell you it's back. So, if this gets me, people, a lot of people think that I get in trouble. I get blacklisted from brokers or something. They need our trucks. I'm never going to be blacklisted. I'm just teaching you guys to level the playing field, to not let brokers capitalize so much on, uh, and not all brokers are bad guys, but some of them will capitalize when there's way more trucks than uh, freight. They, why wouldn't they? So if you all stick together and don't drop, don't dive for the bottom as quick as you can with everybody else, it'll stay a pretty normal market. And right now, a lot of guys are just going out of business and it's sad, but that's why the market's kind of evening out a little bit with trucks. But Long rant, hope it makes sense to you guys out there. I'm talking to you guys that are, that are running your own trucks, dispatching yourself. If you're just watching the channel because you like watching what a truck driver does every day, this is something that not a lot of us do, but a lot of us do dispatch, which means you're looking and you're looking for your own loads and you're trying to maximize your uh, daily output. So that's what we do. A lot of people though, just book ahead or they, they pay somebody 15% or 5% or 10% to look for loads for them when they can do it themselves. Sure, a lot of times you, people just don't want to deal with that. just want to have something I wouldn't say it's lazy, they just don't want to deal with the, the harder work, I guess. Maybe that is lazy, of booking your own stuff and looking for it and, and negotiating on your own behalf. So That's my rant for now. I am going to sit here, look at the load boards again, and I'll probably just spend the night in Savannah today, and I'll start looking for loads tomorrow out of Savannah. Or maybe I'll just go up to Brunswick, because I'm not too far from Jacksonville. If something comes down, down here that's paying so great to go back into Florida, I might do that. But uh, I need to be home for Friday, because we have something going on with the family. But Wednesday, Thursday, I'm all game. So let's see what happens. And uh, probably up in Savannah next time I talk to you. Or at least heading there. It's pretty cool. I've been hearing them talk about uh, oversized load. There's the pilot car right there. Because they've been stopped at the stoplight. I wonder what this is. But it's getting pulled by a nice Pete with some horsepower. Big old thing. I don't know what that is. Big generator or something. That's cool. He's telling them about the roundabout and how to get through it. And we have no loads, guys. They're getting bounced till tomorrow. Um, just, a, just a waiting game. So I think I'm going to get up. There's some sun shine up there. Blue skies. They were at the bottom yeah. of the storm. Get up there to Savannah and uh, shut it down. And we'll wait for tomorrow. But of course, we'll be looking tonight, see if anything pops up. That's early tomorrow morning. Well, let's get to Savannah. Got the bypass on the way station. But that uh, dump truck guy, he was. When you come to the way station, guys, try to. Stay at the speed that's posted. It's 45 miles an hour. He was going like 20. I'm like, man, that's why he got pulled in. Uh oh, this uh, RGN's getting measured. She's measuring from the, or he's measuring from the back tire. I don't know what, I don't, I don't think those are adjustable. So, what is, 
what can you adjust on that, guys? Anybody that runs an RGM, why is he getting measured from the back axle? Uh, let me know. I don't know what, what would that do. We got some blue skies ahead coming into Savannah. And we are catching up to another uh, oversized load up here. Let's turn and burn. That's a hard call right here. But they're backed up that if I got off the highway right there, I would be in the highway. So typically they'll turn on those flashing lights and say go ahead and bypass. I don't know if they're not monitoring that right now. But I'm just going to bypass because I'm empty. Uh, typically I'll pull in there, but that light needs to be turned on because if I stop, my trailer's hanging out in the highway. So we, we're going to keep cruising by. If they come and stop us, I'll say, hey man, sorry. I wasn't trying to be a hazard to 95 northbound. But yeah, we pass the agricultural. Sometimes you just use your best judgment on that because if I pulled in behind a guy in front of me, I'm, my trailer's in the highway. So. Keep cruising, and here is our see you later Florida sign. We are going. Brunswick's coming up. I think it's about 40 miles past the state line. Uh, we'll probably stop there another break and look through loads again, and then get up to Savannah. It's been fun, Florida. A couple of little short ones, but appreciate it. Some water loads, 60 miles. on those all day, but uh, I think we're a little bit too far apart, man. I'm going to be about 18 on those, so. Okay, yeah, we're looking at the uh, 16, um, If you can get them to do, if you can get them to do 17, 50, man, I'll go pick it up and get it down there tomorrow. All right, but, um, only one thing, though, it's a uh, floor load and drop trailer for two to three days. Two to three days? Is it Lowe's, or who is it that's, uh, that he's dropping at? Yeah, yeah, so are you are you 100% sure it's two or three days? Because typically it says drop trailer, but they have it out to you in about four to six hours. closed guys just past Brunswick um, it's talking about fatalities on the CB T's and P's uh, I've seen a lot of emergency vehicles go by and there, I 
Looks like they got a car that rolled and they got they said they have three uh fatalities. So man, T's and P's. We're just past Brunswick. Uh a lot of chatter on the CBs. Very sad. Very sad. We'll shut it down and uh pray for the best for everybody in everybody, everybody and their families. Uh, he's turning around and heading back up the uh, on ramp. Might be a while. I parked the truck off to the side to go see what was going on, but uh, they finally let it open. Peas and peas. Poor guy sleeping in his truck. So we're gonna we're gonna help wake him up. <laughs> we got him. All right, let's get going. Glad we get that guy wake woken up. I don't know how long he was sitting there until someone hit the horn at him, but just a uh, big. Big T's and P's and a uh, moment of silence for these families. It's right after the holiday and right before Christmas. Um, that must have been a heck of a traumatic scene when it first happened because pretty quickly the uh, ambulances on the other side of the highway took off and started heading to whatever hospital. So we'll prayer. Keep that family in our prayers. And I was trying to keep all these people on the right from just shooting by, but now they're just still shooting by because this truck behind me let me in. So. Appreciate it, man. Looks like we had a rollover is what they were saying on the CB. Uh, yeah, it's like a mangled car up there. Just, I don't know, guys. It wasn't raining or nothing. Like that truck back there, that was jackknifed. And we really need to just, I know uh, if Georgia has a no phone in your hand kind of thing. I don't know if it was phone related or what. Who knows? But it just seems uh, uncalled for to jackknife your Volvo off the side of the ditch and then something like this uh, there is a big merge back there and it comes in kind of right here through that fourth lane just watch out for the people and got a Mazda Miata down there could have been a blind spot a little smaller car a guy standing out of that maybe he saw it or maybe he's involved in it. yeah that said oh man it, the jaws of life you can see the whole top it's cut open that's going to wrap it for today guys we're reflecting on life family what matters and um i know this uh video is more about kind of don't park in the fuel island but also uh brokering these loads and knowing the games and all that kind of stuff on top of that dude it's about family we're always trying to make money for our families brokers just trying to make money for their families dispatchers um, but as a trucker if you're running a one truck operation you're trying to do it the best you can to spend time with your family then uh, hopefully those kind of tips help you to not be skewed in the wrong direction a little bit uh, know the games that are playing like that series we have called broker games reflect relax here st stretch out um and then we're probably gonna head out because it's about five o'clock i don't want to deal with that savannah traffic we'll wait until about six and then we'll shoot into savannah and uh see what tomorrow brings should be a pretty sunset and on that note god bless you guys i appreciate you Appreciate each and every one of you. I just talked to Uncle Jason. It makes me appreciate him even more. And the sunsets always remember something in the orange. It's a great song by Zach Bryan. Check it out. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.